Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson, available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, the little notify bell next to it here on the YouTube. If you're listening to this podcast on an audio podcast app, be sure to leave us a rating or a review. It really helps build the exposure. No, we're at now, Steve. We're, oh, oh, oh. we're on Spotify. We're on Spotify now. This took us completely by surprise. So this time last year, we were really, really trying. We were really, really aiming to, to get on Spotify. Get on we Spotify. were on the road to Spotify. And this year, I just pressed a button, and then like a week later, we were on Spotify. So, like, yeah, so sometime in the recent past, sometime yes. in the last couple of months, our podcast server, with little fanfare seemingly, um, added the option to add us to Spotify. And so we did. I mean, even as, as little as like a couple months ago, that option wasn't there. No. So this happened to have been, I, I'm assuming, in the last like 60 days or so. And so we, we hit the button. And then yesterday when we were recording Countout, he, uh, you hopped on uh, your uh, Spotify. And sure enough. You looked us up, and there we were. There we were. So we are now on Spotify. We Official. took, as Kyle Steven here in the in the Patreon chat says, we took the scenic route. I love that phrase, the scenic route. You know what? You know why I love that phrase so much? Why? Because when I was a kid, when I lived in England, oh, I've heard this before. We used to drive in this stupid giant uh, station, station wagon, wagon. Yes, I've heard this before. On these little tiny roads in mm -hmm. England, I would throw up all the time. Yeah. I had like nasty car sickness, and like every time we'd be like, "Hey, Dad, how how well we could be home in an hour, but it'll probably be closer to three because I'm taking the scenic route." My dad and that goddamn scenic route. Oh man, talk about heel heat. I'm surprised you actually like that term then. It seemed like you would dislike it. It makes me laugh. I have really good memories from back then. Even the vomiting? It's not like, yeah, because it didn't happen that often. All right. And come on, I got to see a bunch of castles and shit, which yeah, back neat. then I didn't really appreciate, but now I can look back and In hindsight, like, you do, huh? It's kind of cool that I got to see a bunch of castles when I was a little kid. Anyways. Um, we're also on Patreon. I mentioned the Patreon chat. Uh, $5 and up a month gets you access to this podcast as a live stream, all the recaps that we do yeah. as a live stream. We have a good time in the pre-show, in the post-show. Today we're doing chat trivia. Today we're doing chat trivia. I got to send out some chat. That's what I got to work on this weekend also. My family's ditching me this weekend, man. The wife, the kids, they're all leaving. You have the opportunity to get some stuff done. Yeah, I know, do exactly. Nothing. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm planning on both. I'm, I'm a little you have bit a of whole, nothing. You have a whole three-day weekend to yourself. You have time for all of it. A little bit of nothing. A little bit of a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I can do whatever I want whenever I want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Maybe you can get some uh, some Five Guys burgers. Yeah, maybe. I'm sure. going to watch that Blade Runner movie that I never saw, the yeah, new one. I haven't seen it yet either. And maybe I'll have some Five Guys burgers with that. Good idea. I haven't had the Five Guys yet. Anyways, uh, anything else we need? Oh, ProWrestlingTees.com. I've got, I've got my El Idolo shirt on. I've got on. my Ricochet shirt on. Yeah, we got to get, we really, that's what I'm going to do also. I'm going to bang out 30 new designs. Really, I'm just going to do a whole lot of, of speed and just get a whole bunch of work stop done. With all that, man. No, I got to stop with the speed? No. Well, I yeah, wish that. you don't do that anyways, but. I hear that stuff like helps you lose weight. I got to, I got to try that. It also helps you lose teeth. I like my teethers though. Mm -hmm. mm. You want to keep those. Yeah, you're probably right. Probably best not to do speed then. No. Anyways, uh, let's get a moving. Yeah. On talking about Smackdown. Smack down. Um, you put a tweet up saying that they kept it simple and it worked to their benefit, and I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, there's because it was better than it has been. Yeah, there's only a handful of backstage segments. We're still dealing with this whole Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon business that I'm tired of. I want it to go away immediately. It was almost in a throwaway fashion tonight, though. It wasn't like a 20 minute segment. Yeah, I know, but they feel like they have to incessantly harp on it week after week, and yet it's going nowhere. Yeah, I know. That's what bugs me. No, I I agree with that, but I'm just saying, I'll like progress is progress. I'll take because I, I'm so tired of them being in the middle of the ring. This time wasn't it a backstage. Yeah, it was just backstage. Yeah. I was gonna say there was only a handful of promos and they they focused on wrestling, which is good because the matches by and large were really good. Yeah, they were. And here's here's what I like to okay, number one, the the big negatives obviously there's no AJ Styles, no Shinsuke. Yeah. I kind of felt that less because we went to a live show this past and we weekend. We just saw them, yeah. And we just saw them up close and personal. Yeah, I kind of felt the same way. Didn't really affect me that much, but I can see why people complain about that. Um this is what I did like about it. It started off with nothing but chaos. 
And I was like, okay, I can really appreciate that. They just, for whatever reason, they were like, hey, instead of doing 10 minutes of Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon like wheezing at each other, let's just have, let's just kick it off with chaos. And they, 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 they added an element of danger with Owens and Zayn. Up to this point, they haven't really been dangerous. Right, exactly. They came out. They had mean faces on. I really like the direction of Sami Zayn. He's super mean. It's a subtle change, or, or it's been a change that's sort of been... Because at first when he turned heel, he was kind of goofier and sarcastic. Yeah. And lately, ever since he was, he's had the opportunity to, to vie for the WWE Championship, perhaps, he's, he's been the one. Meaner. He's been checking Kevin Owens. Yeah. He's been, you know, taking the initiative, if you will, in terms of being top heel guy. Well, their match last week, I believe. Uh, I mean, he was wrestling like Sami Zayn of old, which yeah. is face Sami Zayn. Yeah. He was getting kind of a face reaction. This week in his match against Dolph. More aggressive. He was dropping all sorts of forearms. Right, exactly. Being super aggressive. Did a top rope exploder suplex mm-hmm. like he never did before. Yeah. More aggressive. More mean Sami. I like it. Yeah, exactly. So there were changes that I liked. Um, I really actually liked... And granted, I'm not going to harp on this necessarily, but I feel like Shane just hit going on Twitter and saying, hey, Dolph versus Baron. Terrible. Num- number one, the whole Dolph return has been a mess. It's been a mess. Mm-hmm. Because at this point, I think he's supposed to be a face he as is. of last I mean, night. They, they, they kind of inverted his entrance where now it starts with record scratch. Uh, no Titan Tron, no music. He comes out. Like at the beginning, he kind of made a face. And then it came, you know, the music hit back on. Yeah. Like he's out there standing saying, everybody look at me. I'm here to make a point. Cue music. I'm here to show the world. He's yeah. not celebratory. He's trying to make a point, it seems like. Yeah. It's a subtle little character change. I kind of like it, but I, it's, I don't, they can't do this every week. I can't. I Yeah, oh, I, I really hope they don't. I hope they're completely done with the record scratch thing, to be honest. It, it never made sense in the first place. Um, well, especially it doesn't make sense to begin everything. <laughs> right. I know. I know. Because nothing's happening for no. a record scratch to stop the record. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, anyways, so how we got to Dolph being in this position has been one of the most muddy and 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 ill executed. Well, they make the announcement over Twitter. He responds to said announcement over Twitter, and if he was in negotiations to return and he had demands that weren't being met, why would he be at the Royal Rumble? Right. Exactly. The, like the the time the timeline makes zero sense. And then he's in the Rumble for all what two minutes? Right. And he hasn't even referenced the fact that he won the damn United States Championship and just laid it down. He hasn't yeah. even talked about yeah. that. So that's been kind of a mess. That's fine, whatever. We'll, just, we'll take what we got. That's just how they do things these days. They're still trying to figure out how to tell stories through social media. Mm-hmm. Um, bottom line is we're about to get a Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin match, and the whoever winner, won yes, that got be, put into the – it'll be made a four, fatal four-way. Yeah, fast lane main event for the WWE title. Right, exactly. So Dolph comes out first. He does his new kind of entrance thing. Um, standing in the ring, Baron's music hit. No Baron. Mm-hmm. Where's yeah. Baron? Yeah. They briefly cut back to the SmackDown graphics on the Titan Tron. Again, Baron's music, his entrance. Yet, no Baron. Cut backstage. He's getting beat down by uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was really good. Here's a couple things I like about the entire scenario. So then they come out, and Dolph is kind of like... He's not overly cheering it on, but he's kind of like, okay, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Like, this is good for me, right? <laughs> Well, then uh, Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler, I'm sorry, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn come out to attack Dolph Ziggler. They split up. They split up. Baron Corbin comes running out, like, you know, selling that he just got beat up. But I kind of like that it, too often when somebody gets beat up in the back, they're just taken out forever. Yeah. Where I like that Baron Corbin actually got up from his beat down and came yeah, out yeah, yeah, for yeah. some more. Yeah, I like that Owens and Zayn split up. Mm-hmm. Owens came down the ramp. Sami Zayn went through the crowd. Dolph uh, intercepted Sami, and they all started brawling in the mm-hmm. crowd. Um, Owens and Zayn got the upper hand, destroyed Dolph. I believe yeah. Dolph ate a haluva kick. On yeah, the yeah, side. yeah, yeah. And as Owens and Zayn were walking back up the ramp, uh, Corbin came back out and attacked right, them. Right. But uh, Owens and Zayn got the upper hand in the end. Mm-hmm. They're so, mean. They're yeah, very mean. I liked it. It was a good like ten minutes of this. Yeah. And it was just no like commentary. I don't think no. It was just pure chaos. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is cool. This is like what I've kind of wanted to see mm-hmm. for a little while. So I thought it was a great way to open the show. Yeah, a lot more exciting than a bunch of talking. Right, exactly. Um, next, we had a match between Sarah Logan of Riot Squad. Riot Squad. Versus Charlotte. Um, right as the match, of course, Riot Squad joined Sarah Logan ringside. Right as the match was about to start, uh, Naomi and Becky Lynch came down the ring to even the odds. Yeah. Um, it was a decent match. They gave it a lot of time. It no, it was a good match. Great. Sarah Logan's a good match. She's yeah, a good wrestler. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, really good. The finish was great, and uh, Sarah Logan sold that natural selection. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. 
Charlotte picked up the win. But then afterwards, later on, they announced for like the umpteenth time we're going to get a six-woman tag match between everybody here. Mm-hmm. I feel like every other week we get the same match. Yeah, yeah I know. I, know. I, kind of, I wish they would just mix it up in various singles matches. Mm-hmm. Like have Naomi take on each member of Riot Squad separately and Becky yeah. the same and Charlotte the same. Yeah. Rather than just doing the same six woman tag match. I swear we've seen at least four times already. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I mean, what is this headed towards I mean, what are we gonna get? Charlotte versus Ruby Riot at I would think so. At Fast Lane. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know, we'll see. I mean, everybody involved is really talented. I just want to see him mix up and not do the same thing week after week, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm trying to play out this like Charlotte scenario because like I've heard like on Twitter there's like a million different scenarios, and one of my one of my read was like yeah what if Carmella cashes in at Fastlane after Ruby Riot versus Charlotte mm-hmm. gets the title there and then Charlotte shows up at like the uh, no wait Fastlane's way after the Chamber mm-hmm. okay so that we're on work. Smack what what's going on in SmackDown next week? Oh, that's that that's, that's a six man tag. Six woman tag match. Yeah. Carmella could cash in there, maybe. maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really hope they don't do Charlotte versus Rousey at WrestleMania. Ideally, they'll do Oscar versus Charlotte. Yeah. Um, Nia Jax versus Alexa Bliss. Yeah. And then have Ronda in the mixed tag match. Yeah. Uh, but it's funny because everybody has like their own little takes on I know, on I know. how that can play out, and you sort of look at each one and you're like, okay, I can maybe see that. Uh, let's see here. We've got next up was that Daniel Bryan Shane McMahon backstage segment. Yeah, they kept it short, but still, it's the same thing where Daniel Bryan or sorry, Shane was questioning what Daniel Bryan was doing, um, saying, you know, why did you just give Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn a title shot at Fastlane? These mm-hmm. people, you really after their actions tonight, this is really the type of people you want to have representing the company. Yeah. And he said, well, well, what we're going to do is add even more people to the match, maybe. Yeah. How, why is that third AJ? I don't wasn't know. That, hey, wasn't that like the original thing about Fastlane? Wasn't originally supposed to be like a fatal five-way? With like well, Shinsuke, they, Orton, like yeah, a bunch of other they, people? Yeah, they advertised match Yeah, wise, okay, yeah. 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 So. Just different participants, same match. Yeah. Um, so he said, tonight, uh, Kevin Owens will take on Baron Corbin. Sami Zayn will take on Dolph Ziggler. Mm-hmm. And if Corbin and Dolph won their matches... They would be added to W title match. It could be up to a fatal five way. And in addition to that, if Owens or Zayn interfere in either of their partner's matches, they get booted from the title match. Yes, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Um, so whatever. And Brian kind of said, "Okay." Next up, we got a really fun match between Kevin Owens and Baron Corbin. Yeah, uh, it was a really good match. And Baron Corbin kicked out of a roll up. Yep. And he won clean. Corbin reborn. Corbin reborn. Corborn. Baron reborn. Yeah. Reborbin? <laughs> trying to think of a, a, Re Corbin. a witty pun. Recorbin reborn? I don't think there's really I don't know. There. I feel like there's a lot of ways we can go, and we found none of them. Um, anyways, he won uh, with the end of days. Kevin Owens was looking for a pop-up powerbomb, and yep. instead of Kevin, uh, Baron Cry. I do like, when people, when you get the right person selling the end of days, it's a really fun move to watch. Yeah, I know. You know, because it's swing bad. It's like, it's just fun. Yeah, I know. Looks like it might be fun to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, this is a fantastic match. I really like this match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Baron Corbin now vying for the WWE Championship. He's now going to be one of the men potentially eating the pin yeah. against. Although I'm not sure. <clears throat> when I look at the participants, I don't know. Who do you think is most likely to eat the pin now? Because Dolph's in it. Spoiler alert. For the end of the of the recap. Dolph's not eating the pin. No. Because he just signed a contract, and now he's Superman. I'm trying to think what makes most sense, especially if, if the storyline is... Out of this, AJ retains. We get Owens Zane, where Zane is mean. I feel Sammy. like it's Kevin Owens is eating the pin. Yeah, I feel like he's the one guy who can actually these days afford. Like they're gonna have him eat the pin. Sammy, they want him strong. They they like Baron Corbin strong. Dolph just signed a new strong contract. This? Might be something like this, where uh, Sammy's going for a haluva kick. Maybe AJ throws Owens in front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Owens eats the haluva kick. AJ does something to get Sammy out of the match. Pins Owens for the win. Yeah, like that. yeah, I could see that. Something that causes heat between Owens and Zayn. Right, exactly. AJ retains. Yeah, I could see that happening. Um, yeah, that was a fun match. Uh, Baron was really selling the beat down, coming out to the ring, selling the rib injury. Mm-hmm. Owens worked that over for the duration of the match. Wasn't enough to get the win, though. Yeah. Uh, next, we had a Bobby Roode U.S. Open Challenge, or so we thought. Bob Roode grabbed the mic. Hey, Bob Roode. Like, literally just said, I'm doing this because John Cena did it. The U.S. Open Challenge. <laughs> right. And he wants to be a better U.S. champ than John Cena. So I right. guess that means he has to do it, too. He has to do more Open Challenges. But he was the one issuing the challenge. He wanted Randall Orton to come down. 
Oh, listen, man, that's not how open challenges work. Well, I mean, it's just he's, it's his own take. He's the one making the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a challenge, and it's not an open challenge. Well, it's open to anybody he issues a challenge to. Okay, I got you. Anyways, he calls out Orton. Orton comes down. Um, uh, and then Jinder comes down, I like this segment a yeah, lot. I really like this segment. Jinder comes down. He starts trying to sow seeds of discontent between Randy Orton and the entire SmackDown locker room, but also Randy Orton oh, and it was, Bob Roode. It, it was all about the SmackDown top ten. Yes. So this is the, the grand design for the top I ten. I guess so, to, to motivate stories. So Jinder was getting into getting on Randy about only being number nine after being in the company for 15 years and winning yeah. all these titles, being a sure fire, fire Hall of Famer. Yeah. Whereas... You know, uh, rude over here. This newcomer. I know. Six months on the roster is number five. Yeah. Um, and Randy didn't really seem to care. Bobby Rude didn't seem to care. Right. Randy, in fact, said, I don't care about any top ten list. Right. Not a fan of ten for the win, evidently. No, sadly. Or count out. No. Yeah. Um, Bob Rude gets on the mic. Yeah. And he says, Randy Orton, I have nothing but respect for you, but a lot of people really don't like the fact that we get RKO dad no, or maybe that's why you're so low on the top ten. Exactly. And so. then Bob, and then uh, Randall Orton <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> said, "Low like this." And Hold on a second. Before that, before that, thing. Bobby Roode says, "Gender, you're not even on the list." Yeah. Now, Gender should have known this coming yes. out. Why did that upset him? It shouldn't have upset him. He no. should have. He should have to to counter to preemptively counter that burn. He should have said, "I am not on the list because everybody is jealous of me." Something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. I was champion for six months, and they are jealous of me. Something yes. like that. Yes, agreed. But instead, he just lost his shit over Bob Roode saying, you're not on the list. Man, he did not come prepared. No. With a comeback for that. But he did came, come prepared to dole out some colossus, because that's what he did. One for Bob Roode, one Mother. for Randall Orton. Mother. It was awesome. It was fantastic. I love Jinder. I have no idea what all this means. Are we getting a triple threat match yeah. or maybe even a fatal four-way at Fastlane with Rusev? Maybe. Because that was the match we saw live. They're going to have nine their top 9 talents involved in two matches at Fastlane. Yeah. Well, you know what that means? It means because we're going to get now we're going to get what the New Day versus uh, Gable and Benjamin. Yeah. We're going to get the Usos have to defend their titles against Bludgeon Brothers, yes. Yeah, against Bludgeon Brothers. And then Charlotte versus Ruby Riot. That's just a lot of talent in mm-hmm. two matches. No, I agree. I agree. Be a, a quick pre-show, a quick pre- a kickoff show will be. Hey, it means Ty will get on the kickoff show. Oh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, Ty versus Mojo. We'll see that again. Maybe uh, Mike Kanellis will get some TV time. Oh, there you go. He's jacked these he days, jacked. man. He's jacked. I like it. My new goal, Mike Kanellis, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> Next, we had a, a fantastic New Day segment, and this is the, uh, these yeah. guys are the best. So they were the, my, my the best thing about it. So they came out to do a speed eating contest, break the uh, the world record for most pancakes eaten in eight minutes. Right. So they have a little. They have like three plates just chock full of pancakes. Oh, platters. Platters. Thank you. It looked amazing for one thing. It looked immaculate. Yeah. I was so into it. Um, and so, and Big E was going to be the one, you know, trying to beat the clock, basically, or beat the record. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he put the little bib thing on. And he came out with the bib on. He came out with the bib on. They look great. And uh, he goes, and they start the clock. And he just starts, he just grabs like a pile of pancakes and starts shoving them at his mouth. And Corey Graves is beside himself because, like, there's a little indicator. Yeah, A little yeah. Big a E counter, indica- yeah. Indica- yeah, counter. And it's just stuck on zero because none of them actually get in his mouth all the way. And so Corey Graves is literally laughing, saying, none of the pancakes have gotten to his mouth yet. He hasn't eaten a single one. Yeah, I know. Ah. That was pretty great. Oh, man, I laughed so hard. And then, um, uh, Chad Gable, Shelton Benjamin come down to the ring. Yeah, they come down to be uh, heels. Yeah, to be heels and stop the fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I I appreciate they were vouching for the uh, the you know deliciousness of waffles. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't appreciate they were stopping the fun of uh, New Day trying to break this record. Yeah, don't appreciate that. No, I don't like that at all. I don't like them coming down. I mean, they're heels. They're supposed to do and. They are pretty like Gable, especially. He's a funny dude. Yeah. Um. And so he was he was clowning up a little bit. Um. Then they slapped the plate, the platter, one of the platters. First they started dropping them on the. Oh yeah. They said, "What if we do this? What if we do this?" Yeah. Throwing them on the ground, and then, and then uh, uh, Big E was beside himself. Mm-hmm. He, wanted he was to pretty beat upset. Up, beat him up right there. <laughs> what did he say? He said, 
He said, we want some serious competitors. And Kofi Kingston just sitting there picking oh, his nose. And, and Big E does this. He brings his, <laughs> half his shirt down and starts doing this. And Gable says, his nips are out right now. His <laughs> nips are out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that shit was funny, man. That was so good. That was good. I liked it a lot. Oh, that was fantastic. His, his nips are out, man. Come on. <laughs> Kofi's literally picking his I nose. Know. Oh, God. I don't know. It was good. Um, this will be fun. Uh, anyways, it was... Uh, was this a tag match or was it just Big E versus... Uh, no, it was a tag match, It was man. a tag match? Yeah. Oh, my bad. All right, well, uh, anyways. New, New Day, Day uh, kind of distracted uh, uh, Gable <clears throat> and Benjamin or the ref or something towards the finish. Yeah. Um, and that's how uh, New Day ended up picking the uh, picking up the win with well, Midnight why? Hour. It was a singles match. It was not a singles match. It was Big E and Kofi. Oh, yeah, look at that. The New Day. Hmm. Look, man, sometimes I just don't pay attention. Oh, I know. I paid attention when the nipples came out and when the nose picking was happening, so I yeah, kind of yeah. feel like I'm good. Uh, so then we had a Dolph Ziggler interview. He's talking about uh, outshining everybody. He's the best, so on and so forth. But he did it less heelish, slightly more faceish. He needs to add some complexity to this whole thing. So he's got a he's got a new contract. Yeah, that's what we've heard. That's word on the street. Yeah, right. Sweetheart deal. Is that the the terminology? Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like he can. He probably is getting paid a bunch of money, but he can go home early. It sounds kind of like an Orton-ish deal. That's what I was going to say. He can what go if, home what early. Uh, WWE is going to pay for a bus for him. Oh, I really doubt they're going to go that level of Orton. He's not the big show. I wouldn't bat an eye if Dolph was gone. I, I really like Dolph Ziggler. I think he's great. But if they're not going to do something new or interesting oh, with I him. Oh, I agree, yeah. And it was, look, it wasn't that long uh, ago when they were actually doing something kind of interesting with him. <clears throat> With the United States, no, with the Intercontinental title, with yeah, the Miz. Yeah, about a year ago, he had that retirement match. About a year ago. Yeah. That was interesting. I mean, you can't really go to the retirement well too often. No. But you can find interesting things for oh, him yeah, to do. Definitely. I just feel like they need to add some new wrinkles to his character. Yeah. It's very one note, and it's been very one note for the last six or so years. And then this, I'm, you know, I'm the best in the ring. I mean, I'm, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, new contract. That means we're going to see a lot more Dolph. Yeah. He's going to be a bit more... Front and center. Right for right now, anyways. I mean, you, you you know how this always goes. You get a fresh contract, and for some reason they push you a little bit. For, yeah. You know, it's like uh, you can win a couple of matches now, and then you sink back into where you belong. Yeah, you can go back to being the gatekeeper who always loses. Right, exactly, which really should not be the case. Like, he no. should win some matches. Yeah. So, um. It's like, look what they do with uh, Cassius Ono in NXT. He's the gatekeeper of NXT. Yeah, but he wins matches. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. And on top of that, it's Cassius Ono. Yeah, I know. I mean, I. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching the same Dolph Ziggler match for. His match with Sammy last night was good, though. It was a good match. He can always he can put on a good match. I don't know. It's just kind of the same thing with Orton. Is like I feel like I've seen everything they could possibly do with these people. Yeah, no, you know? I agree with that. So, anyway, either we need to see some change in the in ring style or add some wrinkles to the character. Yeah, put him in. A, put him in a story, or just move him over to main event. Uh, next up, we had another one of those Usos promos. Oh, these look great. They look fantastic. Why don't they do this with more people? I know. They got to stop with the words on the screen, though. Oh, it's so irritating. They, I f and I feel like somebody knows that it's irritating because there's less of them. But, like, I don't know if it's Kevin Dunn or whoever really likes them. I feel like it's Triple H because they're on 205 Live now. Yeah, but, I, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I really like it when words show up on the TV. It makes it easier to hear what they're saying. I got all these kids running around here. I can't hear anything anybody's saying. Just turn the subtitles on your TV. I don't know how to do that. How about this? I'll add subtitles to all their promos now. <laughs> but not all the words. Just not the, all the words. Just the ones with impact. The most salient, salient ones. The most important ones. Yeah. <laughs> get, but then I thought the, the promo was like the, 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 the cinematic quality of this promo was great. And then the Bludgeon Brothers, I guess the idea was that they broke the TV screen. This this promo was playing on with their hammers. Mm -hmm. um, and then the camera pulls back and they're with this wrecked TV. Like they're shattering the illusion of the Usos that yeah. they have the tag division on lock. I thought it was really well done. Very cinematic. Well, that was cool. Well, yeah. yeah, it could have been, but it was just looked like a regular backstage film. No, movie. I know. Maybe <clears throat> just the approach, the, 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 Oh, for sure. Yeah. The technique. Yeah. I was just sort of focused on figuring out how much that TV cost. Oh, it probably wasn't. It probably was one that it was probably made like a green screen on the front of the TV where the monitor is. And oh, so it that, oh, that could be. It's a gimmicked one. Yeah, it's one that Bob Roode pushed over when uh, SmackDown invaded Raw. Do you think they have like some prop TVs that oh, they're they able to get, and they're like only you know, however much? Yeah, hundred bucks each or something. Could be. Yeah, could be. Can't be that expensive to gimmick a TV. No, I don't think so. Yeah. 
so yeah, that was kind of cool. That yeah, was well done. Next, we had uh, Sami Zayn was in gorilla position. This was cool. I like and this. then Kevin Owens comes out and says, you know, hey, you really got to essentially pick me up after my loss. You can't let me down. Yeah, Sami Zayn says, yeah. let you down. You let me down by yeah. not winning your match. Um, he said, also, there's no... Uh, there is no we. Yeah, there's no we. This Owens is for the said, WWE title. Yeah. This is every man for himself. Because Owen said, you know, we need to be in this match. We and, and he, yeah, he said, when, when we win the WWE yeah. Championship. Yeah. And he's like... There's no we. This isn't this isn't the Jericho man thing. For himself. This isn't the I like Jericho that thing. they're coming back around to the Jericho thing. Mm-hmm. And hopefully this time, Zayn is the one who turns on Owens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, let's see here. So then we had yeah, we have a really good match. Sami Zayn in the main event against Dolph Ziggler in the main event. Yeah. Um, like you said, Sami Zayn, but heel, more heelish. More aggressive. More strikes. More aggression. It was good. It was good. There was that top rope exploder suplex that was great. Yeah, it was cool. That was really cool. The finish was great where uh, Dolph got out of the way of a haluva kick, hits a zigzag. Zammy kick, Sammy kicks out. Zammy. Sammy kicks out. You know, I got a bone to pick with people. What? I mentioned on an episode a while ago that it'd be cool if somebody did a oh, curb yeah. stomp leg drop. Yeah. And then, like, my Twitter lit up with people saying, well, that's just a famouser. And no, it's not. There is two dis- distinctly different things. When you're about to get a curb stomp, you're basically on your hands and knees like this. Yeah. When you're doing a famouser, you're basically standing up and you're hunched over like this. Yeah. And the leg goes down with you. The leg drop version of the curb stomp would be a guy like this on hands and knees, and the leg is coming down like this, not going with you. Yeah. And because we both know that the leg drop is the most devastating move in wrestling. Yeah. I feel like the leg drop combined with the curb stomp, A, is not a famous, sir, and B, would be the most devastating move in all of history. I can't disagree with you. Thank you. Just pointing that out. I think you're right on both counts. Pointing that out. People checking me on Twitter. I'll check you. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Dolph went over with a super kick. Yeah, man, that's his finisher. Yeah. He's got the most powerful super kick since Shawn Michaels. Now he does. Well, even before... When's the last time he won a match? When he won the U.S. title. Oh, yeah. That wasn't that long ago. That was with the zigzag. That was, that was with the zigzag? Yeah. Isn't that like just a modified sling blade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought that was just his signature. He won with a zigzag, really, or a famous? What? No, the zigzag. Is zigzag usually his finisher? He was historically, yes. Oh, my goodness. But remember, Corbin had Bob Roode up for uh, end of days, and then uh, Dolph came from behind, gave Baron zigzag. Oh, okay. As he was dropping Bob Roode. Yeah. And pick up the win. Pick right. Corbin. Well, I think his contract gave him a bit more stank on that super Could kick. Be. But, I, yeah, I remember it was booked pretty strong also. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. He'd won matches with the super kick before Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. He gets the sweet chin music contractually speaking now, so that's yes. good. Picked up the win over uh, Sammy. Sammy's going for another haluva kick. Walked right into a super, super kick. kick. Super kick. Oh, we have mail. We have mail. I'm really hoping this is, like, some cool stuff for the new office. Yeah, that'd be great. This one here is from another Steve. This one is Steve Yurko. Do not bend. Do not bend. Kind of looks like my handwriting. It does look I, like is, your handwriting. Is, is, am I like a, is this like an alter ego thing? Did I send this to us? That'd be weird. This is from Jason Casey. Jason Casey. It's packed in here really well, though. Oh man. There's stuff in here. Dear Stephen oh, Lawson. Oh, cool. Go ahead. Dear Stephen Lawson, thank you for the constant and consistent wrestling content. I've been listening for over a year now, and you've both been a dependable and positive source of entertainment while I'm working. I've had the pleasure of meeting you both, PWG and the G1 Special in USA, and you are both class acts. I apologize for sarcastically throwing up a two suite for Lawson, but it was the running gag at the time. Oh, that's fine. Despite being a lifelong artist, I've also only recently gotten into drawing more wrestling fan art in the last couple of years. Included are two prints of mine that will be discontinued. I had some time to spare, and oh, I had some to spare, and thought you maybe might find use for them for your new set. Awesome! Um, it's of the new day and the NXT roster circuit 2015, oh. early 2016. Hope to catch you at another wrestling event in the near future, Steve Yurko. Cool. He says thanks for keeping it real. real. Let's check this out. Oh, wow. wow. Whoa, look at that. Here that is see. super fresh, oh, man. Oh, that's cool. That is super cool. That is that's definitely sick. going up. 
And then, oh, oh man, wow. that is fantastic. Look at that. We got Baron. We got Samoa Joe. Hideo we got Tommy. Bailey. Genzo and Cass. Looks like Emma. Looks like Apollo Crews down there. Oscar. That's great. And Finn Balor. We have more artwork from Jason Casey. First, we got Whoa. Real. Oh. Real. And this one's different. Okay. One for each of us. And then, oh, man, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. It's glow. Glow. Oh, that's really neat. That's very awesome. Thank you so much. Wow, that's great. That's super cool. We have very talented friendos. We do. Anyways, let's answer some questions. Yes. Um, Nemo, the Universal Kidney Punching Champion. Which wrestler do you think is a possible main eventer but needs a new gimmick or rebrand to get there? Oh, nice. We're only $9 away from $5,000. Um, Sorry, what now? What's the wrestler you think is a possible main eventer but needs a new gimmick or rebrand to get there? Uh, I don't know so much a new gimmick or rebrand. I think people just need interesting stories to give them something interesting to do. Like, I could, I'll, I'll be honest, I could believe there's two. I could believe Bray Wyatt still, and I could believe Dolph Ziggler. If they gave them something that was cool interesting, and interesting. Yeah. When we saw Bray in the main event scene last year, and people were getting geeked out about I know, it. No, because he was in involved in an interesting story. I know, and they were booking Sister Abigail super strong. Mm -hmm. And then. That then happened. not. That stuff happened. Um, unretired Dwayne Nix said, SmackDown has been pretty much a drag lately. What's the percentage chance that AJ Styles versus Nakamura is the main event, the last match on the show? At Mania, he's going to say 40%. Two. Um, a botch 2%, and that's only if uh, Brock Lesnar. It's it's the same that Cena was talking about, the Miz beating Brock Lesnar. Yeah. If uh, Brock misses his flight or gets injured on the way to the or airport sick, or yes. whatever, or sick. Then yeah, but no, it's it's a two percent. Yeah, it's gonna be Lesnar versus Ray. Yeah, that's gonna be the main event for, for sure. sure. Absolutely. And if Ronda Rousey's there in a singles match, that'll that might be the co main event. Uh huh. Fat bastard champ Alex Foster. You're which wrestler bastard. from the past would have a gimmick perfect to team with someone on SmackDown today? Which wrestler? Which wrestler from the past would have a gimmick perfect to team with someone on SmackDown today? Mr. Perfect and the Perfect Ten, Ty Dillinger. There you go. That's the answer. They could team up on and, and, and feud also with how who's more perfect. Yes. CM Punk finds it insulting. If Shinsuke wins at Mania, could Rusev be the one to take it off him at or after SummerSlam? Rusev's another guy who I would always believe. He always has the believability factor. Yeah, he just needs... And he has a, a good gimmick right now. The whole Rusev. Did you see him? Thing him is, and Lana wore I saw, matching yeah, singlets. I saw his outfit. It was great. And and she picked up her first ever win mm -hmm. in the WWE. Mm -hmm. And they both seem legitimately emotionally overwhelmed by it. That's awesome. Yeah, it was great. I watched. I didn't watch. I watched like the last five minutes of the match. I need to watch the beginning because I think Bailey and Elias do a sing oh. thing. Uh, I saw that bit on uh, Twitter. The GIF or a little bit of video where Rusev drops Elias's guitar on the ground. Oh, I didn't. During I the middle of the match. Oh, I didn't see that. I saw when they both, when Rusev and Lana came out and both did the Machka run. Matching outfit. That was yeah, great. That was cute. Um, Connor, say yeah. Yeah. Oh, Farrell, power rank top five to six Triple H guys based on who you think he pushes for backstage. Number one's Finn Balor. Oh, yeah. At the end of Raw 25. Yeah. He's basically saying, this is my number one guy. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I'll this, say, this guy here, this Finn guy. Balor. Yeah. I think Triple H really likes Nakamura. I think uh, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. Yeah, yeah, and Nakamura. Although kind of interesting, we didn't see a lot of like Seth and or uh, Kevin Owens and Vince sort of interaction during his 365 special. Oh yeah, you didn't watch that. No, huh? I still haven't seen it. If no. I recall correctly, I don't really remember seeing a lot of that. What Owens Triple H interaction? Owens, yeah, Owens and Triple H interaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't really see a lot. There was only that one moment I think with Vince, but he did speak about Vince a lot. Anyways, um, who else? That's four. Ooh, I like this question. All right, go ahead. Oh, another, another. Oh, Oscar. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. She might be like number two behind. Yeah. Uh, El Pupacabra. Vince is a huge Stephen Larson book Raw fan, and he asked you two to select the next WWE 2K19 cover star and create a storyline based oh, on wow. it. Wow. 
Who would be it, and what's their story heading into the release of oh, the game? Oh, CM Punk is leading to a match against Triple H. <laughs> it's just how we're going to book it. <laughs> there you go. CM Punk, the next WWE 2K19 cover star. Uh, you know, seriously, if that if that was the if if I would say I would say go all in on Oscar mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or the club, but I think Oscar. Yeah, Oscar. Like they're they're so they they're so into the history making stuff these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't think of somebody more perfect. Good point. You know, it'd be fun is if they did, if they did. Uh, let's say WWE had plans for Ronda Charlotte or Ronda Oscar by SummerSlam mm-hmm. or even Mania. Mm-hmm. Which Next Mania. It'd be fun if 2K19 was a cover of that, of Ronda and Charlotte on yeah, the yeah, cover yeah, yeah. because Ronda's like a big star. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's a good idea, too. Um, digital Rookie with talks of a roster shift around Fastlane. I think it's Backlash. Maybe it's fascinating. I don't know. Power rank the five people to bring over to SmackDown, five people to tr- you trade to Raw. Hold on. We got an episode of Countout about that this weekend. Yeah, that's right. We do. So we'll hold off on that one. Oh, this is interesting. Mm. Custard Cannon Jared Ellis. <laughs> After Oscar's streak is eventually broken, who do you think will be the next one to go on that type of streak in WWE? I think it's going to be a while. In NXT, they seem like they want to get those losses out of the way. Yeah, they do these days. Yeah. Um, I would have thought Alistair Black was a mm-hmm. contender for that, but he's already lost. Yeah. Maybe Lars Sullivan. Maybe. He hasn't been pinned yet. But I recall. I think all his matches is uh, when he was Dylan Miley, he lost because his partner mm-hmm. got uh, pinned. But I don't think he's actually taken a pin yet. That I can think of. Depending on the uh, maybe Ricochet. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, depending on how they think of him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, if Alistair Black already ate a loss, it's going to be a while before somebody else yeah. does because yeah. they really seem to like him. Maybe if they bring Keith Lee in. There you go. That'd be fun. Walter. Walter. Gosh, you see the pictures of that guy's chest? Yeah, I did. No good. Don't like it. Don't like it. Um, let's see here. Oh, Richard Nason. What is, what is what the pop Corbin got when he won? <coughs> People counted, stood, and applauded. What a way for creative to shake things up. You know what? When we went to the house show, I was surprised that Corbin got a pretty solid pop. Yeah. I was really surprised. Yeah. I thought this guy was supposed to be a heel. I mean, Bobby Roode got a good pop. Yeah. Uh, the crowd booed for gender. Yeah. But then Corbin got a decent pop, not Roode level. Yeah, people like a badass, dude. Yeah, I know. People like a badass. And he doesn't really, they haven't really given him an opportunity. Like, Kevin Owens literally, like, yells at people. Yeah. He, like, goes out of his way to be heel guy. Yeah, yeah, to the crowd, yeah. To the crowd. And Corbin doesn't really do that. Corbin doesn't really do that. Like, the worst thing he does ever done is really, like, he grabs the U.S. title and he, like, shows Shows it in people's face. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Kevin Owens will, like, talk crap to people. And we've always said Baron's not the greatest at that. Hey! Hey! Hey, you're there. I'm here. I'm here. That means you're not me. That means you're not me. You're not me. Hey. Hey. All right, here we go. Slow Wolf. Speaking of Baron Corbin, Slow Wolf. What's your better, Larson? Whoppers and pancakes. Because Gable and Benjamin came out and said, we'd prefer waffles. First, let me be diplomatic. There's a time and place for each. If you're in the mood for pancakes, nothing is better than a pancake. If you're in the mood for a waffle, same. Okay. Personally... I think more often than not, I would prefer the waffle. That's my preference. I like the texture of waffles. They're crispier. There's more flavor to them. Yeah. Um, like, I just feel like pancakes, they're just there to soak up syrup. And that's not that, That's not necessarily a bad thing. That's just my take. I feel like waffles, I don't have to douse in syrup to provide any sort of flavor. Yeah. Have you ever bought frozen pancakes in lieu of frozen egos Or egos? Uh, Yeah. And? Well, I, I get them for Bama. She likes them. No, you. No. Okay. No good. Is that the crux of your argument? No, it's not. I mean, it's just all, all about. You, I, I think your first, your first, the first thing you said is absolutely correct. It all depends on mood. Yeah. I could, I could get just in, just as much enjoyment out of, uh, eight egos, like a whole box of yeah, egos, man. as I can out of going down to Annie's breakfast over there. 
and get some really good pancakes. Mm -hmm. Depends on my mood. Yeah. You're right about that. No, I, I am. cannot disagree. Yeah. But instinctually, my gut always says pancakes are better. Okay. But you're right. It is. It's a mood thing. It is. You know, like I, I agree with it, you and I'd say my gut will usually tell me waffles. Waffles. Yeah. Like if I go to if I, I think the let me ask you this, though. If you're hung over, do you have a go to biscuits and gravy between the two of them? Oh, really? Yeah. It's not even waffles or pancakes. Biscuits and gravy. See, for me, if I'm hungover, it's pancakes mm -hmm. all the way. Mm -hmm. Nothing like going to... I just feel like that's too... Well, granted, biscuits are dense too, but I feel like if you just have one biscuit cut in half gravy and sausage on it, that'll fill you up. I feel like I need like 10 pancakes to fill me up. Oh, yeah, Or a lot. Dude. And then if you got a bunch of pancakes in your gut when you're hungover... Mm. Oh, then you just lay down in bed and watch TV. Yeah. That's amazing. Or fall asleep. <laughs> do both. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Nate Morris, what would be the better option for Owens and Zayn at Mania, one-on-one -on -one match uh, or a tag title match against the Usos? Uh, if Sammy turns heel in the one-on-one -on -one match, because I feel like that's uh, some character evolution for both of them, but if they're going to go back to heel Kevin Owens, then just keep them together and have a tag title match. I have a really hard time thinking. I think they're, they've gone down... They've started down this path of Sammy being top heel guy, mm -hmm. and I don't think they're going to jump out of that anytime soon. Yeah, I would hope not. Yeah, I, especially after this week. Uh, um, uh, H H B K with Dolph's new con new hashtag Orton clause contract seeming face turn and main event push. What are the odds he goes over at fast lane, leading to a triple threat versus Styles and Nakamura at WrestleMania? Zero. He'll Pretty be in the two percent botch. He might win the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Yeah, could be. He could get into the U.S. title scene again. Maybe after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could brief get... flirtation with the WWE title. Yeah, maybe. Um, Sahil Dillon. So honestly, I feel like Ginger's promo tonight was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Yeah, it's great. I feel like he's actually finally going to hit his stride. How well do you guys think Ginger would work <clears> in the U.S. title picture? Personally, I feel he'd work really well. Thanks, Friendos. Much love. Oh, he's he's made for it. Yeah, absolutely, he's made for it. I mean, it. he had that world title run, gave him legitimacy, mm -hmm. and now he can contend for virtually any title. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, CM Punk finds it insulting. Is it just me, or is the best part of having promos in gorilla position, knowing that Vince is literally right next to him off screen? Yes, that's all I can think about. It's just off screen, you have Vince. You have Road Dog, yeah, Michael, Michael Hayes, Michael P.S. Hayes, and Jamie Noble just hanging out, and Shane probably just hanging out right there. Just right That's there. That's gotta be awkward. It's That's, all hell. Oh, it's the worst. And it's yeah, it's think about it. That's way worse than being in front of ten thousand people and doing a promo and staring at you and staring Kevin at Owens you. In the back of his mind, just thinking, "Are we good? Are we good? No, are we good? Exactly. No. Exactly. God, it's drive people insane. That's gotta be horrible. Are we good? Are we good? No." Uh, oh, that's a good question. Do you have one? No, it's just, that's a really good point. What? Vince being right oh, I next know. to you and Gorilla. Uh, Tommy T. Hey, friends. My question is, do you think WWE is right to wait on things that get over? For instance, Rusev Day is over now, and while many fans see it and right away want a massive push for Rusev, but WWE uh -huh. waits to see if it has staying power. Which mindset do you guys think is correct? Tommy T. Of course. You, nah, man. They need, as soon as something... Is, is clever or good, they have to go all in on it. No, of course not. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. They, they need to wait on things to make sure. And I wonder if that was... I, I want You You seem to think that it's it's a, it's a guarantee, and I'm like 80% there with you about the Ty Dillinger 10, 10 count. Okay. That's why he was brought up. It's, it's very likely. I also kind of wonder if it was a variety of things. That might have been one of the big things. But also just the fact of how many people are coming into NXT. Oh, I'm sure that played a part in it. And yeah. it's like, what more can we really do with you? Is an NXT title run really going to help you that much, given that we probably don't see that much of a ceiling for you beyond like a strong mid-card thing, maybe? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but that might be, if if what you're saying is true, and they're like, hey, this 10-count thing is super over. Let's bring that dude up. Then that was that was not a good idea. No. You know, no. I mean, I know people still kind of do the 10 thing. It's not... It's not Anywhere nearly near as prominent as it used to be. Even the house show we went to. Yeah. Well, I mean, it used to be every 10 count was a 10 count. I know. I know. It's really died down. Yeah. Um, the down undertaker, Zach Parks, considering all four men challenging AJ at Fastlane, aren't in the SmackDown top 10. 
It's true. Yeah. Um, if a WWE title opportunity comes for someone inside the top 10, when will it come and who will it be? Well, it's going to be Nakamura at WrestleMania. Yeah. He's three. Let's see. You got Orton. You got Rude. Uh, you got the New Day. You got the Usos. The New Day, the Usos. Nakamura. And then you got Naomi, Becky, and Charlotte. Yeah. So is the question about WWE title? Yeah. It's going to be Nakamura at Mania. Removing him, I would think it'd be... Randall Orton. Oh, gosh. Yeah, probably Randall Orton. Or Bob Roode. <laughs> you just like saying their names. I know. Jeffrey Nguyen. Michael Cole acknowledged Lana's win in the Mixed Match Challenge as her first in the WWE. So does that mean... We have to take the myth, the mixed match challenge as canon. Well, I think it was always kind of existed at the periphery of canon. Yeah, yeah, I guess they not, they acknowledge it and promote it during Raw and SmackDown, right? Like Star Wars accepts certain things as canon when it kind of like is in their best interest. Yeah, like so their comic books are supposed to be canon. Yeah, and in one of the comic books. Uh, there was a character who said that she was Han Solo's first wife. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to address her in the Solo movie or oh, if they're just going to forget question. about that. That's a good question. I have no idea. Like, I don't know if they ever, if it was ever resolved as being like a swerve in the comic book. Maybe she wasn't actually his wife and that was said in the next issue. I remember reading and being like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so when it's convenient, I think WWE will accept. WWE does the same thing. When it's when it's convenient, they'll accept certain things as canon. Yes. Like Chris Benoit is no longer canon. You know what no. I mean? Oh, no. Um, Connor, say yeah. Yeah. Ophira, where do you see the other six competitors are going for Mania once Reigns wins Elimination Chamber? Well, Miz will have his next challenger from that match for the IC title. I think we're going to get, hopefully we'll get like a couple stories out of that. Uh, like I can imagine maybe Undertaker showing up at the chamber. Maybe. That's probably the raw afterwards. Probably the, yeah. Because Cena like will a, say, now that I lost, I have no road to right. Mania. Right. He's going to so Bong. say, yeah. Yeah. I have no, I have no road to WrestleMania now. I don't know what I'm going to do. Wait, yeah, just ask Vince. Say, no, all you got to do is Vince is what I want to do. call it Mark. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Taker. Yeah. yeah. You wanna you wanna join me on the road to mania? Yeah. All I'll do is point at the sign. That's do cool, I, Mark. Do I even have to show up? Or do you just want me to point at the sign? Who am I talking to right now? It's me, Mark Calloway. Who? who? <laughs> Undertaker. Oh okay. oh. okay. Who was that other guy? My personal assistant. <laughs> uh the glorious broken sound wave. Hey, Steven Larson. Hi. I like that he said Steven Larson, not Steve and Larson. Oh, Steven. Steven Larson. Oh, that's funny. Do you think they should put the UK title online at WrestleMania? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course they should. Give us Pete Dunn versus either Trent Seven or Tyler Bate again. Tear the house down. Give me Trent Seven. Slow roll into the ring. <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, here's a good one from <laughs> Randall Orton Voices. What what needs to be done for the riot squad to get over? We'll need to win. They need to win something. Ruby Riot needs to win things. Yeah, well, any of them need to win. Any of them need to win. They don't something. win very often. They don't win very often. They don't do for that. For example, often. last night Sarah Logan lost. She lost to Charlotte. She needs to win. Win against people. Winning, Winning. and then <laughs> they'll get over. Exactly. Uh, One last question. Yeah, and it's time for trivia. True Bud Ryan asks, how come Deep Six is not Corbin's finisher? Because he has a finisher. It's called the end of days. Because he has a finishing move that's as good as Deep Six is. He has a finisher that's better. Yeah, exactly. Deep Six isn't that different from a Blue Thunderbomb. Yeah. I do like the Blue Thunderbomb, though. Yeah, same. All right. Trivia time, Steve. Trivia time. Classic and modern era. We are, So our goal at this point is we're hopefully around fit, we're around two to three weeks away from office space. Uh-huh. We need a new trivia book by then. All right. 
This is going to be. Yes. We only have like two or three more weeks well, left. Well, let's do this. Let's this. let's let's get to the next tournament of champions. Okay. Sticking with these cards because this is what we've done the whole time. Okay. During the next round, we'll start with something fresh. Sounds good. All right. I'll go first with classic era. Classic era. Who did the Ultimate Warrior defeat in the retirement match at WrestleMania Seven? In a retirement match at WrestleMania Seven. The Ultimate Warrior? Yeah, who did the Ultimate Warrior defeat in a retirement match? Oh, Savage? Seven? Yeah. Because he Randy, had to go to Randy Sa- Did Randy Savage actually retire? No, I don't think so. Well, no, he went to WCW. Yeah. Uh, what future WWE Hall of Famer won the very first match in WrestleMania history? But anyways, I know we've had this card before, but I would not remember this. Wow, WB Hall of Famer? He's a Hall of Famer, and he won the very first match in WrestleMania history. Tito Santana. Good job. Way to go. Way to go to my memory banks. What was the last name of the brothers, Jimmy and Johnny, that won the World Tag Team Championships in 1974? Um... Jimmy and Johnny. Should I know this? Uh, would you know? Would you no, have known it? Probably not. Um, Once I, not, so I see the answer here, and I, I would say, yeah, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I've heard the names before. Okay. Uh, Jimmy and Johnny. Um, I'm going to say Valentine. Close. Valiant. <laughs> oh, man. Why'd you put a finger up? You didn't get it right. I was close. Championships. <clears throat> what future WWE manager and Hall of Famer teamed with Professor Tanaka to win the World Tag Team Championship three times in the 1970s? <clears throat> Mr. Fuji? Very good. Um, what WWE Hall of Famer managed uh, WWE champions Bruno San Martino and Bob Backlund? Blassie? Um Arnold Scotland. Oh, I've I've had that answer before, but I don't remember that. It's tough card, Steve. What WWE Hall of Famer was known for his green tongue and chewing up turnbuckles? Oh, that's George the Animal Steel. Yeah. Um, what superstar battled Rey Mysterio in a ladder match for custody of Mysterio's son? Yay, hey, Eddie Guerrero. Big events. What diva eliminated? This we're in the modern era now. Yeah, modern era. By the way. What diva eliminated the great Kali from the 2010 Royal Rumble? Beth Phoenix. Very good. Who jumped from Raw and won a 20-man battle royal for the vacant World Heavyweight Championship on a January 2006 episode of SmackDown? John Cena. Kurt Angle. Oh. Uh, Championships. What former image consultant of JBL won the Divas Championship on the October 12, 2009 Raw. Oh, shoot. Only to lose it the very same night. Oh, darn it. What's her name? <clears throat> Image consultant, right? Yeah. Was it Jackie? What's her last name? It starts with a G. Gata? Yeah. No. Oh. Jillian Hall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wouldn't have known that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, what third-generation superstar starred in the film The Marine 2? Oh, uh, wasn't that uh, DiBiase's kid? Ted yeah. DiBiase. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what man is the first honoree to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame twice, once as a solo competitor, and once as part of a faction? Ric Flair. No, nah, man, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Ric Flair. Very good. I got two more than you did. I get two cards. Why don't we get cards for play per view? I would be way up on you. Terry Runnels. That's a good one. Stacy Keebler. All right, so last week, that's a good good pair of cards there. Last week, we gave away for chat trivia this RVD card. Oh, you have to sign these. Oh, and a Stephanie McMahon card. Can you grab those prizes again? We're gonna give. We have some. We're gonna announce the prizes for today's chat trivia for the patrons. We'll do the new ones. Ooh, what's this? Oh wow, Undertaker, and whoa, Vince McMahon. Whoa. These are. So, we're gonna. We're gonna get these autographed by us, and they're gonna go to a couple of the patrons 
in the post show for chat trivia because we love our patrons anyways uh hilton can we get hilton's not there hilton's not here gypsy bug can we get some music please nice good job bubba anyways that's it for the show thanks for watching until next time we'll talk to you guys later bye